We're joined now from uh, our LA bureau by the authors of this fascinating book. It's called Millennial Momentum, How a New Generation is Remaking America. Morley Winograd and Michael Hayes are the authors. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to have you with us. Good to be with you, Jonathan. All right, Thank let you, me Jonathan. get to, glad to be here. Let me get to you first, Morley. Uh, exactly how is this a broad question? How is this generation remaking America? The millennial generation is the largest generation in American history. There are now 95 million millennials, bigger than the baby boomers, which everybody always thinks is the biggest generation. And they're not all, they haven't all turned 18 yet. Uh, by the end of this decade, when they all do, one out of three adult Americans will be millennials. And when that large portion of the population is of a similar generation with very united beliefs and attitudes and behaviors, it changes the entire culture and makeup and nature of a, of a society. So we would expect that this generation will change not only how America votes and governs, which it's had a big influence in already, but will also change how we work and learn and how we entertain ourselves. But Michael, this generation, and when we talk about the millennial ge generation, we're talking about those uh, born, as you define it, between 1982 and 2003. There's a lot of people who would look at that generation and say that in this current atmosphere and economic climate we're in, they're disillusioned, disenfranchised, uh, and really not able to achieve much. But that's not true according to your research. No, it is most definitely not true. The millennial generation is what generational theorists refer to as a civic generation. And historically, civic generations tend to be uh, very optimistic, very uh, group-oriented, and united, and working toward a common cause to improve things. And this is, is as true of the millennial generation as it was true of their GI generation great-grandparents back in the 1930s. Even though millennials are certainly suffering from the bad economy, they are optimistic, they believe that things will get better, more optimistic than any of the other generations that are older than they are. So, Morley, how do we see this taking effect? What practical things do we see this generation undertaking that leads you to say that they will remake America? Well, of course, they've already elected a president of the United States. They were the decisive vote in the 2008 election in favor of President Obama. But now they are uh, moving into all areas of American society. In the workforce, they're bringing a, a focus on bottom-up uh, leadership on uh, expanding the s boundaries of a corporation out to its customers and even to the employees' friends through the use of social networks, challenging the leadership of companies who want to work in a top-down environment that millennials resist. Uh, in education, they're demanding school reforms and focusing on pragmatic solutions that will improve the way we educate uh, millennials and eventually millennials' children. And uh, in, in the world of government, they are hostile to the existing system and want to see changes made that open it up to greater degree of participation, not in the voting process, but in the decision-making process. And Michael, does this generation lean one way or another overwhelmingly politically? Yes, at this point, they are uh, clearly leaning in a democratic direction. Uh, as Morley indicated, they uh, voted overwhelmingly for Barack Obama in 2008 uh, by a greater than two to one margin. And at this point, they also identify as Democrats by about a 52 to 39 percent margin over the Republicans. They are, in fact, the first generation in at least four where the, where the greater number, the greatest number of people within the generation call themselves liberal rather than conservative. Uh, and they um, tend to favor a government, an activist government to resolve difficulties, are very tolerant on uh, social issues. So they, they, they would have to be said to be, a, uh, at this point, a liberal and democratic generation. Morley, any indication that, as, as many generations perhaps do, they will become more conservative as they get older? Uh, well, of course, this generation, there isn't anybody older than 30, so we can't know this for sure. But most social science research suggests that once people identify with a political party and form an adult impression of the world and how it works, it doesn't change very much over the course of their lifetime. Uh, as we said, they voted Democratic in 08, 
Should they do so again in 2012, that will tend to reinforce a partisan identification on either side of the aisle, whichever way they vote, that is likely to last a lifetime. The GI generation, the generation most like them in our recent past, continued to vote Democratic in 2004 for John Kerry. It was about the only generation outside of millennials who voted Democratic, and that's because they voted for FDR in the 1930s. And Michael, the bottom line, you look at this generation from all your research and think this is a generation that is engaged, that is optimistic, and therefore America's future is pretty bright in the hands of these people. Yes, we most definitely believe that. Uh, because of their optimism and because of their uh, unity, because they, they work uh, together uh, as a group and because they are uh, both pragmatic but also idealistic, uh, at the same time, we believe that they will work together and resolve many of the issues that have been bedeviling this country for the last four decades. All right, it's a fascinating the book. Key, it's millennial. Oh, I'm sorry, Molly, did you want to weigh in there? Yeah, I just wanted to say the key, Jonathan, is to give them a chance to exercise leadership and change the current boom, boomer divisive leadership that we have today. All right, Morley Winograd and Michael Hayes. It's a great book, Millennial Momentum, uh, available, I guess, uh, at the iTunes bookstore, Amazon.com, and every good physical bookstore that remains in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, Thank thanks you very, very much, much for Jonathan. being with us today. Great to have you. Fascinating book. All right, let's bring the panel 